Gary Schwartz is Chief Operating Officer of HII Mission Technologies. Gary, it's great to see you. Thanks for joining me today. Um, what's the landscape look like now for CJADC2 and what continues to be the ultimate goal that the Defense Department has for that? Well, you know, CJADC2, and first you really got to say JADC2 first, right? So JADC2, think about that on the US only side. And then the C is the combined, or think of that as your coalition partners, right, that are brought in to an extent, depending on who they are. Um, because, you know, the U.S. doesn't really go to war alone very often. Um, and, you know, that is a war fighting concept overall, JADC2. So it's not a thing. It's not a system. And, and at best, you describe it as it's a suite of capabilities in many cases that are still on a drawing board, still in PowerPoint, hoped for. And a lot of the underlying capabilities and technologies exist, but you gotta bring them together. And you'll hear people talk a lot about the data fabric or the data mesh and underpinning everything. And once you have that, and you can trust everything and you, know, you get the data from where it, you know, A to B, where it needs to go and everything will be solved. Uh, artificial intelligence will make all the decisions or speed those decisions up. Um, the part that I worry about, and, and maybe it's because of my history, but the part I worry about is how do you get the right data to the right systems? Because humans have an ability to adapt to different information, but systems only work as they were built. And most of our systems weren't built to work in a truly net centric fashion. Uh, so a lot of the work today is about working individual threads, you know, from system A to system B to system C, decision makers in the loop in there. And what we need it is to be many to many and whatever the circumstances require. And so there's a lot of work, and I think artificial intelligence can help with that, but there's a lot of work of how do I translate? How do I robustly provide the information that a system needs? You might need six pieces of information if you're system X. I might need only five. You send me the six, I don't know what to do with it. I might choke. I might need a whole lot more than you do. And I need it in a different, if you will, language, not a computer language, but I need different elements in different formats. And so that aspect is sort of the old problem we've had for a long time of joint interoperability, and it still exists. So the data, you know, in this data mesh, data fabric, automatically being able to translate, fill in the gaps, that might exist so a system doesn't say, I was expecting a, a piece of data I didn't get, I can't do anything. Filling all of that in, I think is ultimately the key. I think there is a lot of resetting going on with changing the change administration, some different uh, organizational shifts about which organizations will lead which efforts. Um, and in the end, what I wanna see is a, a, uh, a way to bring the services together. They're all kind of building uh, their own systems under some general concepts um, and, and then something that's going to underpin all of that and bring it all together to make it work. Um, I've just seen too many times in the past where the Department of Defense uh, tries to integrate it themselves um, or hand it off to a single partner and there's challenges on both sides um, but I just know that getting many different companies and many different services with many different systems, all of it to be able to work in a contested environment is an incredible challenge. And so a lot of experimentation, a lot of things in the labs that you take to the field, you know, a lot of that is in play right now, but we're still taking um, limited steps, working on individual threads versus looking at the broader problem. So I, th I think there's a lot of work in front of us. To that idea of looking at the broader problem, where does one start in your view to look at that broader problem? Is it the interoperability? Is it the data standards about how the data transits from place to place and from service to service, from um, US to ally and partner, all of the above, something that I missed? What, there, there's a lot going on there, as you said. So, so the old way we used to solve problems is uh, tight control, strict standards, right? And everybody got on board, except what we realized is that's not how we buy things in the U.S. military. Um, an individual program manager might not get any money to tie into certain joint interoperability, or maybe the first thing gets cut when things, you know, when money gets tight. Um, 
And so standards have not really proven to be very successful. And then we built oh, really rigid gateways. Okay, you speak French, I speak English, I'm going to work that gateway translating you know, between systems. But that's still very manual, very much point to point. I think the idea of a, and you could argue the point, data mesh or data fabric coupled with artificial intelligence that understands what all the different systems need, that can see what's available at a point in time in the network, and then move the information to where it needs to go. And by the way, deal with the fact that sometimes it's looking for the node that was there just a moment ago, and now it's dropped off. Lost satellite communications, right? Or or somehow otherwise disappeared from the network. And then all of a sudden, by the way, surprises you later, pops back in 10 minutes later. So how do you deal with all of that? And you have to deal with that at speed and you have to deal with networks that have a lot of porosity to them. And I think artificial intelligence coupled with what we're seeing now is great compute capabilities is going to help you overcome that. So I would say we're probably to the place for the first time in my lifetime where it's less about standards and it's more about having these kinds of automatic abilities within AI ML to be able to work the translation because they know what's needed. And they can recognize when a system joins a network, that system needs this information. Do I have it? Is it the right, you know, as well as is it the right system and how we typically think about it. So I think we're there. And I think we can do that by focusing on that as a solution versus more standards. Mm -hmm. right? How much of determining the solution to those challenges that you've outlined, is it up to the Defense Department to say, we need this and then come to you and your colleagues in industry and ask for that thing? And how much of it is incumbent on industry to go to them and say, here are the possible outcomes that we think you want to achieve and these are the ways that we propose that you get to? So it's an easy chicken and egg problem. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so. You know, uh, we, what you typically see, right, is you'll talk to uh, defense leaders um, and some will walk in with a strong technical background. They'll have a good idea of what they want. Um, some will have a strong operational background. They'll be able to describe it in operational terms. And, it's, and then industry is trying to take those cues as to what they want to work on, right? Um, it doesn't do us any good to come up like somebody maybe you know watching this says, oh, he's got the right idea. Let's go build that. And then you go farming it out to the government and everybody says, well, why, why'd you do that? We're going in a different direction. So I think there's a lot of dialogue that has to take place. You know, I, I think there's a lot of great capability in Silicon Valley and there's a lot of great dual use things that you can do. Um, we have some of the more robust AIML tech giants, you know, anywhere, right, working on things. Um, I think they can bring a lot of that core technology. I think there's a lot of the defense industry that can give you a lot of the, you know, they under, you have to understand the weapon systems themselves. You have to understand the operational employment concepts, all that. So I think it's a big dialogue that has to occur. And the challenge has been with every administration is how do you tap that capability that maybe doesn't sit today in the defense industry couple that with the defense industry and make sense of it. DIU was born as a way to try to figure out how to leverage all that. Um, and, and the problem is you wind up in conversations in small round tables, it's sort of the, the people that were invited from the people that weren't invited. So I think the best way to approach this thing is to kind of open it up broadly. Um, use Use uh, experts to try to winnow down the most likely culprits, right? CDAO tried to do this, right? I think by bringing that together and then winnowing it down over, over a pretty quick period and then experimentation, right? And we, all the different organizations out there try experimentation to an extent. Um, the problem is they're all disparate. They're all separate efforts. And, and I think we have to sort of have a federated approach to experimentation with a tighter control at the centralized part for the federation. One of the ways that you're supporting the goal that you just laid out there is the Mission Partner Environment Initiative. How does that get the department to the vision that you just laid out for JADC2? Right. Well, you know, the, the Mission Partner Environment is really that, com that part of the system that really puts the C on the JADC2, right? So that's the coalition or combined is what that C stands for. And so that mission and partner environment is going to provide the ability for the transfer of data, you know, from JADC to, to our coalition partners and potentially bring information from the coalition partners back into JADC2. And so 
you know, recently we've been asked to, you know, work with uh, DOD in, in supporting that effort. And uh, we, we have a platform we've built called Ionic that's a, a cloud-based, you know, large data um, platform for exchanging information, a data fabric, if you will. And so uh, that's what we're going to help them with. And hopefully uh, we'll be able to extend that into some of the other areas. Gary, it's great to have you here. Thanks for joining me. Thank you.